been experimenting with NeuroChill myself and uh, there are quite a lot of applications for it, mostly centered around obviously modulating or reducing cortisol. For example, during dieting, I was a not very successful but competitive bodybuilder. <laughs> um, I do have phases where I, you know, I try and uh, strip body fat down to as low as possible. The general approach to do this is to restrict calories and increase energy expenditure. What happens then is the body uses or needs hormones such as cortisol to force that energy uh, production whilst you're in the gym but you've got the low energy, low physical calories. So what happens is, you know, the cortisol comes along to try and help you achieve that goal, but cortisol obviously makes smooths you out, makes you watery, burns off muscle tissue. So what we need to do is, is use, or what I like to do is use NeuroChill, one capsule during, with breakfast, one with lunch, one in the afternoon, two before bed, because that tends to keep cortisol to a minimum, keeps your physique looking good, and keeps your muscle where it should be on your body, not being burned into, uh, into energy. Um, I also like to, when I'm not doing that, I like to use NeuroChill as part of like a, an anabolic framework because you want to kind of uh, stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. And to do this, you need to reduce or eliminate those sympathetic nervous system hormones like adrenaline and cortisol again. So uh, NeuroChill can be used usefully as an anti-catabolic mechanism and also as an anabolic mechanism. So I'll probably train twice on a Monday uh, twice on a Wednesday, twice on a Friday, but on a Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday I'll have an anabolic day. So during that day I'll eat a lot, but I want to make sure that I'm resting and digesting. So again, uh, a neuro chill with breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then two in the evening uh, is great. Now, yeah, I appreciate that this uses quite a lot of neuro chill. And yes, I get my neuro chill for free because I co-own the company, but the point is try it, experiment with it. You may find that you use one with breakfast, one with lunch, one with dinner, and you don't need any in the evening. You know? So that, again, you're back to three capsules a day, which is a fairly standard dose. Um, I like to take a neuro chill before cognitive events. So, you know, I've had one this morning before doing this filming because it just takes the edge off. I'm not quite as worried about my performance. And of course, being worried about your performance inhibits your performance. So again, you know, I just take one capsule of neuro chill. Maybe I'll take a neuro stim. I didn't this morning because I hadn't had breakfast. I'd had a coffee and two green tea capsules. So I couldn't take a neuro stim and have it be active or effective because it needs to be taking food, but I could take a neuro chill. So again, we're gonna look at a piece in a minute, we're gonna do a piece in a minute where we talk about food intake versus nootropic intake. Uh, and we'll see a little bit more about that, but it, it's learning or getting a feel for, oh, I haven't had any food, so I can't really take a neuro stim, but I can take a neuro chill. And you'll get quite similar effects. Neuro stim is more focused and driven, but I don't really want to be too focused and driven in front of the camera because I've got to sit here and not twitch too much. So I want to take uh, NeuroChill, for example. So there are many different new uses for NeuroChill. It's up to you to experiment, but I've given you a few guidelines there that I hope will help.